right, just going to do a video covering this recent scandal of a false prophet named Ravi Zacharias. And I've heard about this guy in the past and heard you know, he's supposedly a Christian apologist. And you know, go watch out for apologetics, by the way. Apologetics, a lot of it is dealing with the flesh. It's about debating and, and other, other kinds of worldly fleshly practices. Because the Bible doesn't speak well of debate. It, you know, debating is, is not well spoken of. It's, it's sinful, it's carnal. So you gotta watch out for apologetics. It is good. It's okay to defend the faith, but making a living off debating is not scriptural. It's not of God. But he was a Christian apologist, and recently, uh, well, he died a couple months ago of, I forget what it was, it was like some kind of cancer or whatever, but some recent developments have come out to now where he is being, now been exposed for sexual harassment and sexual misconduct. And this is, I've noticed this thing a lot of false prophets out there, is so, at some point they're going to get exposed for being a pervert. Jack Hiles was like that. Jack Hiles was a cult leader of the First Baptist Church of Hammond, Indiana, and just a, a very wicked man. And he was, he was into fornication, he covered up all kinds of abuse and sexual misconduct and, and sin and immorality that his, you know, his pastors that he sent out were doing. And, you know, he had these cultic lapdogs who just would follow him to the very end regardless of his immorality. And he's not the only example, there are plenty of other big false prophets out there that it comes out that they're perverts, they're into sexual perversion, they're into lasciviousness. And that's a common theme I've noticed with false prophets is at some point, it's going to come out that they're perverts, usually after they die or even when they're still alive. You know, I heard of one guy, he was actually seeing prostitutes. And I'm not referring to Donnie Romero, but there was somebody else. Donnie Romero was, of course, one of them. But there was a bigger guy who, I, forget, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he got caught with prostitutes, you know, because they make all this money. They, they are so popular and there's no accountability there, so they run off and be perverts. But I'm going to read to you from the CNN article about the disgusting misconduct that he had basically with multiple women, not just a few, but many women. And just the, and just a quick warning, there's gonna be some vexation, you know, there's gonna be some graphic terminology. I'll, I'll try to you know, keep it PG rated, but it's pretty bad stuff. This is the fruit that, that Zachary, Ravi Zacharias has produced. This is the fruit, again, by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter seven, verse 15 to 20. And his fruit is corrupt, and I have no doubts that this guy is in hell right now, because first of all, he preached a false gospel. He, he, you know, buddied up with the Mormons, and Mormonism is a cult. Yeah, obviously, it's very clearly a cult. But this guy, Rabbi Zacharias, he's in hell right now. I, I have no doubt. Just like oh, Jack Hiles, I believe he's in hell. And I'm not saying that just because all oh, you know, he's being nasty. No, his fruits prove he was not saved. So, I'm gonna read to you this article from CNN. Ravi Zacharias, the prominent head of a global Christian organization who died in May, engaged in sexual misconduct that included sexting, unwanted touching, spiritual abuse, and rape, according to a statement from the ministry he founded, summarizing the results of an investigative report. Allegations came from four female massage therapists who said Zacharias would either touch his genitals, I do apologize for the vexation, that vex, vexing word, or ask them to touch his genitals. Uh, additionally, five therapists claimed he, quote, touched or rubbed them inappropriately, and one reported, quote, many encounters over a period of years that she described as, quote, rape. According to a 12-page report from the law, Mil law firm Miller and Martin, which was hired by the ministry, the law firm said uh, it employed a private, invest private investigations firm that included former federal law enforcement officers. More than 50 people were interviewed, including more than a dozen massage therapists, according to the report. Continuing. A digital forensics firm examined four cell phones and a laptop used by Zacharias. Evidence un was uncovered of a, quote, text and email-based relationship with women that were, who were not his wife. So it was adultery. It was fornication. You know, I remember the Bible says in... I, let me pull the verse. I think it's Second Peter, two fourteen, talks about. Let me pull the verse. Second Peter two fourteen. Yeah, it says having eyes full of adultery. Common trait of false prophets. A common factor of false prophets. They have eyes full of adultery. Typical of these false prophets. I've seen so many. I've seen it with so many false prophets. They are into adultery. They're into fornication. Anyway, continuing. Along with 200 photos, of, or more than 200 photos of women, the report said, several women accused Zacharias of using ministry funds to give them financial support. 
eliciting uh, personal information about their lives and employing religious language during encounters according to the report. Zacharias, who quote, defended Christianity through books and lectures, died last spring at his Atlanta home at the age of 74 after battling sarcoma. I hope I'm saying that right. He was a leading figure among Christian apologists, an intellectual form of Christian theology that defends the faith against doubters by invoking history and logic. Uh, the Martin and Miller report, quote, detailed, sorry, detailed new allegations of misconduct against Zacharias. The report said that the Christian leader's claims that during his marriage, he, quote, never engaged in any inappropriate behavior of any kind when confronted with similar allegations in the past were, quote, misleading and false. And you can read the whole article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But they go on to say how he, he basically was a pervert. He was into lasciviousness. He was into fornication, adultery. So I'm going to show you some scriptures that describe false prophets. I showed you the one, 2 Peter 2.14, which talks about having eyes full of adultery. Perfect description. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. But there are false prophets also among the people, even that it, even as there shall be false prophets and false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, and by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment is now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Perfect description. You know, the way of truth is evil spoken of. You see, people are now look at using this to take these false prophets who are perverts and say, look, Christian Christianity is full of perverts. You know, they take the Roman Catholic pervert priest, the pedophile Roman Catholic priests, and they lump it along all Christians. All oh, Christians, you know, their churches have pedophiles. No, it's the Roman Catholic Church, and they're getting it from the pagan Greeks and Romans. Because the pagan Greek and Roman Empire was filled with all kinds of perversion and lasciviousness. And that's where the pagan Roman Catholic Church is getting it from. Because they're getting it because it's nothing more than Greek Roman paganism repackaged. Roman Catholicism is just pagan Greco-Roman religion repackaged. But you see, they'll take stuff like this, so then the way of truth is evil spoken of. And it talks about through covetousness, they'll make merchandise of you. You know, It's a big business, quote, defending the faith. When you sell all your books and that kind of stuff, you can make a whole lot of money. And I do believe some of these people could just possibly be, like some of these demonic, charismatic faith healers are just atheists who are in it for the money. I do believe that very strongly. Continuing. More scriptures, by the way. Well, here's some scriptures that talk about, you know, your sin finding you out and your, you know, secrets being revealed. Because, just keep this in mind. If you're in sin, it will be revealed. You can't hide your sin forever. Like Numbers, numbers I think it's Numbers 23, 32, your sin will find you out. I actually then pulled the verse. Let me just make sure I got the right verse. Sorry, it's Numbers, sorry, it's numbers 32, 23. My bad. There is no verse 32 in Numbers 23. Yeah, it says, you know, and be sure your sin will find you out. Exactly, your sin will find you out. You can't hide it forever. But let's read the scripture. Luke chapter 8, verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Can't hide it forever. It will be, it will be found out. And when it is found out, you're going to be exposed. Because when you try to cover your sins, God's going to just expose it to everyone. Especially if you're in a, in a position, I mean, obviously, again, I don't believe he was saved. But if he was saved, if you're in that kind of authority teaching position, you know, and you're, in, you're covering up sin, you better bet God's going to expose it and expose it to everyone and show your true colors. If you are saved. And if you're lost too, posing as a Christian, he'll do that as well. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore whatsoever ye have, ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in, the clo in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Get ready to get all this news coverage about you being a pervert. This is going to be proclaimed upon the housetops. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27 to 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear, sorry, appear beautiful outward, but, with, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but inwardly ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Again, good description. They appear so righteous, they appear, oh, I'm defending the Christian faith, I'm a defender of, of the, the Christian faith. But what's, what's going on in secret? They're full of iniquity. They're full of hypocrisy. They have an outward show of righteousness, like Rabbi Zacharias had, but inwardly they're perverts. They're full of iniquity and hypocrisy. 
I wanted to cover those scriptures and just show that, you know, you got to be careful. You really got to look at people's fruit. And again, common trade of false prophets, I've seen this a lot. At some point or another, they're going to be found out as being perverts, whether they're seeing prostitutes like Donnie Romero did or, you know, fornication, adultery, all this stuff. All this other stuff, lasciviousness, whatever. They're going to be found out. You know, nothing. there's nothing covered that will not be, I heard out of the verse, God, don't want to misquote it. It says, there's nothing secret that shall not be made manifest. You can hide it, but it won't be hid forever. God is going to expose it. So don't be deceived by false prophets like Varagi Zacharias. Uh, he is in hell right now. He was not a saved man. He may have said some good things. He may have, you know, said a lot of good things against atheism or against, you know, Islam or Hinduism or whatever. But, you know, he can talk the talk, but he can't walk the walk. And, you know, he deceived lots of people. So don't be deceived by Rabbi Zacharias. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.